Hey guys, it's Vicki, and today I'm here to share with you my reading wrap-up for the month of February. I'm very pleased to say that February was a better reading month than January was. I had two five-star reads this month, so let's go ahead and dive in to the wrap-up. So before I get into the books that I read, I do want to mention a DNF that happened this month. It is a book that I do want to try to read again. It's just right now, it's just not the time. That book is The Terror by Dan Simmons. I made it 255 pages into this book and it was just very slow. I was really struggling. It was kind of putting me in a reading slump. So I was like, you know what? I gotta put it down for now. Um, it seems like it's going to be a good book. It's just right now not something that I want to try to pursue. Um, I'm hoping that maybe I can get my hands on the audiobook. I think that that might make it a little easier to get through. But yes, for now, this is going to go back on the TBR shelf and hopefully I will pick it up again sometime in the future. So I started off my February reading by completing my reread of the Lock and Key series by Joe Hill and Gabriel. Gabriel Rodriguez. Um, I read volumes three, four, five, and six um, in the series, completed it, loved it. Um, for those of you that don't know what the series is about, it's about a family, the Locke family, who after a terrible tragedy move across the country to their father's hometown of Lovecraft, Massachusetts. They go in and move into his childhood home, which is this very old revolutionary war era house and very quickly they start finding these keys that are magical and do different things and the series is basically about them figuring out what these keys are where they came from and what exactly they are protecting so yeah this is a very very awesome series i loved revisiting it especially because i didn't really remember how it ended so uh it was fun to revisit that and it's definitely a series that I'm glad I have on my shelves because I will definitely reread them again. All of these issues got five stars from me. Okay so then for like a little chunk of February I did this really weird thing that I did not intend to do but upon looking at the books I read I sort of did a not quite six degrees of separation with these books. It was more like what four? Like four degrees of separation? Yeah. And I'll get into how that is, but it's just kind of a fun thing that I realized happened, so I wanted to kind of share it with you. But this whole thing started with a buddy read that I did with Bobby over at Bobby Reads Too Much. We buddy read A Ladder to the Sky by John Boyne. And um, this is a book about a guy named Maurice Swift who is an aspiring writer. And though he is gifted in writing words, he has a really hard time coming up with his own plots. He cannot think of a plot. So he steals other people's ideas. He is quite a bastard. Um, he's a character that you are definitely going to hate when you read this book. Uh, he doesn't really have any redeeming qualities whatsoever. He's very attractive, charismatic, and totally uses that to his advantage, takes advantage of people, is an awful human being. But I absolutely loved this book, um, probably because even though the character, the main character, was so abysmal, the story just totally sucked me in. I did not want to put this book down. The writing was fantastic. The whole like kind of first section is um, Maurice uh, befriends this older writer who was a teenager during World War II in Germany and he is telling Maurice his story. And the way that John Boyne writes that kind of um, jump in time from the present day to the past to World War II Germany was so seamless when you were reading it. It was it was amazing. And then yeah, the rest of the writing was also fantastic. So I'm pleased to say that this was my second John Boyne book uh, and I really, really loved it. And I gave this five stars. Can't recommend it enough. You're going to hate the main character, but the book is amazing, so definitely check it out if you haven't. So, going into my little four degrees of separation thing that I did. So this book um, was about a writer, okay, and kind of that whole industry of writing and publishing. So the next book that I completed is also about a writer, 
And that book is The Dark Half by Stephen King. Now this one is about a writer named Thad Beaumont who early in his career um, decides to start writing under a pen name because his books just aren't really selling and the books that he's writing under this pen name of George Stark are just they're sort of different from what he normally writes and they happen to be very popular and so after you know years of writing under this pen name he decides to kill off the pen name and go back to writing under his real name um mostly because he has found out um by you know some people kind of out him as the guy behind George Stark so he decides to kill off this pen name and then some murders start happening to people in kind of his his circle of like in the publishing world um in this the, the murders are linked to him for sure and it just kind of takes off where this pen name is he alive somehow and what's gonna happen with this guy he's killing people he's very violent he's clearly not happy about being killed off so the story sort of takes off and I absolutely loved this book like I'm so surprised at how much I love this book because um you know as I'm reading Stephen King I'm trying to read his books chronologically as much as I can and this one just totally was not on my radar and I basically read it because it was like the next one that I was due to read did not think I was going to love it as much as I did. This book is awesome. Truly. It's probably going to now be one of my top Stephen King books of all time. Um, it just had such an awesome plot. The whole concept of having this, um, this pen name, who is not, he's not a real human being, right? But he is. And the whole connection between the two of them, between Thad and George, and that they kind of work off of each other. Um, they're twins in a way. And just the whole, that whole kind of story centered around that connection and around the writing process. It's just so, it was just so interesting to me and just totally like pulled me in. Also, there are some fantastic horror elements in this book, especially in like the prologue, I wanna say. Was it the prologue? I wanna say it's like the prologue or the first chapter. Right off the bat, I was like, wow, that was like awesome horror right there. And it just gets better and better. And again, I know a lot of people who complain about Stephen King, they get upset with him because sometimes his endings are kind of, for lack of a better word, shitty. This ending was so good. It was one of the best Stephen King endings I've ever read. I loved it so much. So the, just as a whole package, this book was awesome. Five stars, loved it. Um... Yeah, you should definitely check out this book if you haven't. Um, it's one that I will definitely reread in the future. All right, so then continuing with my degrees of separation, okay, The Dark Half dealt with, in a roundabout way, it dealt with twins because Thad and George are twins in a way. And also in the book, Thad has two children that are twins. So twins takes me to my next February read, which is Bellwether Rhapsody by Kate Reculia. And this book also deals with twins. Our main character, main characters are a set of twins, Rabbit and Alice. And the book takes place in the 1990s, like the mid, 1997. So um, they are in high school and they um, are attending this, um, kind of like festival type thing at a hotel. Um, Alice is in the choir, she's a singer, and Rabbit plays the bassoon in the band, and they both were selected to be a part of this amazing festival in upstate New York. The festival is called Statewide, and it's basically, yeah, this kind of thing where all these ta very talented young people come together, they take classes with like master um, conductors and things like that, and then they put on a performance at the end of the weekend. And so they go to this hotel, it takes place in this hotel called the Bellwether, where 15 years prior to the start of the story, this horrible murder-suicide happened in one of the rooms. Um, this woman killed her very new husband, they had just gotten married, 
killed him and then killed herself. So the teens are at this festival and Alice, of course, is staying in the room where this murder-suicide happened and her roommate goes missing. <laughs> so it kind of becomes this mystery as well as to what happened to her roommate and all of that. So this book had a lot going on in it. It doesn't really quite fit into one specific genre. Um, the best way that it was described, and I feel fits the description perfectly, is it's like the TV show Glee meets The Shining meets Agatha Christie <laughs> because it kind of has all of those sort of elements going on at once. Um, and it's also, yeah, very much like a coming of age story because at the, at the time, during while all this is going on with this mystery, you also have these twins who are trying to figure out what they're going to do with their life, who they want to be. Um, they're harboring some secrets from each other that they want to talk about. And so it's, it's very much about that sort of um, familial relationship too, in addition to the, the mystery of what happened to this missing roommate. So overall, I enjoyed this story. Um, though, like I said, some people might be a little put off by it because it doesn't quite, it, it, it sometimes feels like it doesn't know what it wants to be. <laughs> But I really enjoyed that part of the book, that it didn't quite fit into one specific genre. Um, I think also my nostalgia, the nostalgia factor with this book is super high for me um, because I was a teenager in 1997. I was, uh, let's see, I was 13. Um, so a lot of the things that are kind of brought up, like pop culture references and things like that, I totally was like, oh my god, that was me. You know, um, like they talk about like having a disc man, you know, in your pocket. And that's like how you listen to music, like you have the CD and you put it <laughs> in the front of your hoodie or whatever in your headphones. Um, a lot of like certain sorts, sorts of music are mentioned from the 90s, um, specifically Smashing Pumpkins. Um, just things like that. So the nostalgia for me being it set in the 90s was definitely there. And then also just the idea of she goes into, um, Kate Rapulia goes into a lot of um, great like descriptions and discussions about what it is to be um, interested in loving the performing arts. Um, some of the writing in here that talks about that was just really well done and really relatable. I related to it very much because I was not in band or anything like that in high school, but I was um, a competitive dancer. And so there was so much about this that I related to because I, as a competitive dancer, I would go to um, dance conventions that were like on a weekend and you'd go to like, it was usually at a hotel ballroom. You would take classes with master choreographers and they were, and I would remember leaving those those dance conventions being so inspired and just being ready to just get back in the studio and work and just absolutely loving it and feeling like you really um, took part in something really special with this group of people that you're dancing with and it was just it was amazing and she totally captures that um, in this book but with you know music and singing and so that also may have like made my enjoyment of the book even more than like the average person but i think that if you were like into band or anything like that in high school that you would definitely get something out of this um and it would make you feel nostalgic for those days for sure so all in all i thought it was a pretty good story the mystery um definitely wasn't like the main focus of the book which was okay because for me like i said the nostalgia and like the kind of more coming of age stuff was was what i thought was um more entertaining to me um but this was a good story and i gave it three out of five stars all right so then we have bellwether rhapsody which took place at a hotel so then i read a book that took place at a motel so pretty much the same right i read the sundown motel by simone st james this is quite a buzzy book right now um and it did not disappoint, I will say. It deals with um, two timelines going on. You have a present day timeline where you have a young girl named Carly who goes, um, leaves school and goes to Fell, New York, which is in upstate New York, um, to figure out what happened to her aunt who went missing back in 1982 at this hotel in the town of Fell. The hotel or motel is called The Sundown. And she was a night clerk there, went missing, never heard from again. And though this aunt is not someone that she actually knew or anything, she wants to figure out what happened to her. So she moves to Fell temporarily, ends up getting a job as a night clerk at the Sundown Motel, 
and then the story sort of takes off from there. So um, this was a really fun one. It definitely had some atmospheric creepy elements. Um, the ghosts in here, there were some ghosty, ghosty aspects that were really fun to read, especially at night. Um, you get a little creeped out, you know, so that was really fun. Um, the mystery, I thought, was good. It was really good. I sort of guessed the twist or the, you know, the mystery. Um, I've probably had like 100 pages left or so, and I, I guessed it, and I was right, but it didn't take away from my enjoyment at all. Um, I thought that, yeah, the writing was good. I enjoyed it. Um, my only complaint, and I don't even know if it's really a complaint, is that Carly and Viv, which that's her aunt, um, the two timelines that you have in the story kind of goes back and forth between Carly in the present day and Viv back in 1982. And there were definitely aspects of both storylines that were very, very similar to each other. Definitely some parallels. So there were times when reading, I was getting them a little mixed up. <laughs> um, because like I said, there were just things that were happening in both timelines that were either like the same or very, very similar. So um, I was getting a little mixed up. So. I guess I wish there had been a little bit more of a um, some differentiation between the two characters, um, but then again, they are related. It's an aunt and a niece, so I guess they would share possibly share qualities from each other. I don't know, but um, that's really my only complaint overall. I really enjoyed this. I thought it was, like I said, a fun story. Um, I didn't want to put it down. It was enjoyable, and I gave it four out of five stars. So yeah, see how I went from. A Ladder to the Sky, okay, found my way to the Sundown Motel. So it was like four degrees of separation. It was really fun. It makes me kind of want to do this again, just for fun. Maybe not like during a, like a reading month, but just to kind of look and see like, how can I do that with books? I'm sure there's like a book tag out there or something that, that has done this, and I'm going to see if I can do it, because I think it would be really fun. It's just, I didn't mean to do it. It was completely accidental, but it just kind of worked out that way. And then I finished out the month by listening to the audiobook of The Call of the Wild by Jack London. This is the copy that I have, um, that I have had since childhood. So this is an illustrated um, children's adaptation of this book. But the one I listened to on audio is like the straight up, unabridged Call of the Wild. Um, because we read this for my local book club and we went and saw the movie. Um, and I'm going to probably do a flicks and lit about that, so I will talk about that later. But for today, let's talk about the book. So The Call of the Wild is a classic um, about a dog named Buck. He's our main character. And he is dognapped at the very beginning of the book and is sold to um, become a sled dog up in Alaska. And it's about his kind of transformation from becoming this, you know, very cushy, you know, domesticated dog to eventually living in this this very wild um, sort of life. So overall, I I enjoyed this book, but I was very shocked at how brutal and violent <laughs> this book is because I, I've never read the actual unabridged text. As a kid, I read this and it was a little bit played down the amount of brutality and violence, at least from what I remember it. So listening to the audiobook, I was just like, oh my gosh, like it seemed like on every page, a dog was either being beaten or killed or killing somebody else or something else. It was just, it was very brutal. Um, and that might make me sound like a sissy or whatever, but I don't care. I thought that it was very violent and it, and it, it made me kind of sad, you know? It's definitely not a, an uplifting sort of book. Um, but I did appreciate some of the themes explored in this book. Um, themes of like uh, survival of the fittest and um, themes of being civilized versus not civilized and the differences in the, the rules of both of those ways of life. Um, also, kind of the idea of being um, in a group versus being alone. Um, all of those things are sort of explored in this book, and so I did appreciate the themes. Um, but, like I said, it was, it was brutal. It was really brutal. Um, and I have to say the writing, I haven't read any other Jack London, but I felt like his writing was a little, um, a little stiff, maybe. 
is the word to describe it. There was nothing about it to me that was like super awesome. Um, I do think I would probably try to read White Fang um, just to kind of give him another go. But the writing didn't like wow me. It was fine. Um, but yeah, I gave this book three out of five stars. All right, guys, so those are all the books I read in the month of February. It ended up being a really good reading month. I was really happy with how everything turned out, especially since January was so, like, meh for me. <laughs> so please let me know um, down below what your favorite read of February was, because I would love to hear what everybody was loving. Um, also, let me know if you've ever come across this, where you do, like, this weird thing where your books end up being connected and you didn't even intend for it to be that way. Let me know if it's ever happened to you because I think that would be really fun um, and like I said maybe I'll try to see if there's a like a book tag that deals with this or maybe I'll create one I don't know we'll see um, but anyways I hope that you guys had a wonderful month and I hope that March treats you well and I will talk with you very soon thank you so much for watching bye